You're listening to On Air with Jezza. I'm Jeremy Spake, and I'm delighted that you've decided to join me today for this special 90s edition of the show. We're going to be looking at some of the highlights and the lowlights of the decade and playing some of those tunes which hopefully you'll remember because I certainly do. Let's get started and see if you believe. there with Believe, which was released in 1998, the year in which Monica Lewinsky alleges an affair with US President Bill Clinton. I can remember it as though it was yesterday. And Japan hosted the Winter Olympics at Nagano. If you were going to participate in a Winter Olympic event, what would it be? Personally, I think I'd quite like a go at the four-man bobsleigh, probably on account of the fact that there's four of us and the other three would do most of the work. Although I doubt, as a team, we'd get too far to be brutally honest, as I'd probably fall at the very first hurdle, i.e. trying to get on board the sleigh in the first place. (laughs) Imagine it. In November of 98, the first component of the International Space Station blasted off from Baikonur in Kazakhstan on board a Russian proton rocket. 
Less than a year later, I can vividly remember trying to convince the controller of BBC One that I wanted to go into space and report for the channel's Millennium 2000 Today programme. That's the one that followed the sun rising um, from the east through to the west, um, taking us from the 90s into the noughties. The only concern the Beeb had at the time was how they would insure me for the trip. Imagine that, that was their only concern. I ended up reporting from the Bolshoi Theatre in Moscow, a much tamer gig, and was thwarted from my chance to head to space and look down on Earth. Anyone that knows me knows that Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space, is one of my heroes. And although the thought of blasting into space fills me with fear and dread, the curious side of my nature would love to get a glimpse from space. In July, the remains of the last Tsar of Russia and his family were laid to rest in the Peterpool Fortress in St. Petersburg, overseen by the then Russian president Boris Yeltsin. I can remember the remains being flown on Aeroflot to London to be DNA tested to verify their authenticity, having been found in a well close to Yekaterinburg, which ironically was Yeltsin's birthplace.
thanks to Simply Red there for Fairground, released in 1995, which was a very busy year for yours truly. Yep, we were already filming the second series of Airport for the BBC at Heathrow, and I can distinctly remember that in the January of that year, we had an Aeroflot office party to mark the remarkable efforts of Valery Polyakov, who'd spent 366 days aboard the Mir space station, which at the time broke the record for the longest continuous period spent in space by a human being. Do you remember that Kit Kat ad? You know, the one that featured the Mir space station being plummeted into darkness owing to dodgy electrics. Well, thanks to that Kit Kat wrapper being wrapped around a couple of dodgy wires, power was restored to the space station. I can remember that ad as though it was yesterday. I'm probably going to have to go and have a look now just to make sure I'm not imagining that ad because it definitely existed. You go off and have a look and let me know. Well, Polikov would go on to spend 438 days in space. That's some achievement, especially as I haven't managed one yet, despite my best endeavours with the BBC. On May 11th of the same year, more than 170 countries agreed to extend the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and without any conditions. Unsurprisingly, North Korea was one of the few not to be a signatory and has continued to develop nuclear capability, which in my humble opinion is a crying shame. You would have thought that we saw all we needed to see of nuclear weapons capability when the US decided to drop bombs on Japan in 1945. It was a good year for John Major, who was re-elected Prime Minister, despite spitting images portraying Mr Major as a somewhat grey character. He was well-respected, cross-party, and it's reputed that he was one of the late Queen's favourite Prime Ministers. Whilst it may have been a good year for John Major, it certainly wasn't for OJ Simpson, as he found himself in court accused of first-degree murder of his former wife and her friend. As we know, OJ was acquitted on both counts, but the courtroom drama had the world transfixed. Except for my good self, because I was far too busy, didn't have time to be watching courtroom dramas, but I know some of you will certainly have seen it. He just looked uncomfortable, as I recall, from the footage shown on the news.
That song absolutely haunted me when it released in 1999. Yes, Ricky Martin there with Living La Vida Loca. I can remember it playing every single day during my panto season at the South End Cliffs Theatre. I was playing Smee alongside Shane Ritchie's Captain Hook. And whilst we had lots and lots of fun with the Essex audiences, that particular song drove me insane. You know, it was played twice a day for six, seven days a week, for three, four weeks. You you, you got fatigued by it. And now it's probably going to haunt me because I should probably be humming the tune for the next three or four weeks. I have to say, panto is hard work, but the constant laughs you get during the run makes up for all of the pain that you go through. Never mind Ricky Martin. Well, earlier in March of 1999, the Czech Republic, Hungary and Poland became members of NATO and Shakespeare in Love wins Best Picture Award at the Academy Awards. That's the Oscars to you and I. It's a really good film with Joseph Fiennes. In fact, I might even watch that again because it's a really lovely way of of telling the story of Shakespeare and his theatre. Very sadly, in the April, the wonderfully warm and genuine Jill Dando was shot dead on the doorstep of her home in London. I was due to film with Jill for the holiday programme in St Petersburg just before this tragedy occurred. And I can recall the BBC decided that it might be unsafe for Jill to be in St Petersburg as at the time it was considered to be a little bit like Dodge City. It's somewhat ironic and devastatingly sad that just days after the BBC made this decision she would die on her own doorstep. A great loss to broadcasting and humanity as she was definitely one of those that was one in a million. I feel both grateful and humbled to have had the pleasure of meeting her and to have worked on a show that she anchored for the Beeb for so long. At the end of the summer that year, I took the difficult decision to leave Aeroflot and move to the BBC to take up a full-time presenting role, which would see me hosting several series in the noughties, but more about that when we run a naughty special show in early 2024. Goodbye, Norma Jean Though I never knew you at all I've had the grace to hold yourself With those around you crawl I crawled out of the woodwork And they whispered into your brain They said you on the treadmill And they made you change your name It seems to me You lived your life like a candle in the wind Never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in I would have liked to have known you But I was just a key Your candle burned out long before Your legend ever did Toughest role you ever played Hollywood created a superstar Paying with the price you paid Even when you die Oh, the press still hounded you All the papers had to say Well, the Marilyn was found in the news Seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind Never knowing who to cling to When the rain set in I would have liked to have loved you But I was just a key The candle burned out long before Your legend ever More than just down Marilyn Monroe 
When I think about it, looking back on the 90s, it was actually quite a difficult decade. And although I had a, a, a fairly good uh, decade in the 90s uh, with the arrival of the BBC at Heathrow, I can't help but reflect on the fact that the Cold War ended and globally we seem to see lots of disharmony, lots of conflict, lots of unpleasant things happening. The last track there, Elton John's Candle in the Wind, was originally released in 1989, but with revised words became a song of national mourning in 1997 following the tragic death of Diana, Princess of Wales. She was taken far too soon. I can remember being, like many, in total shock as news broke that the princess and Dodi al Fayed had been killed in Paris whilst being pursued by the paparazzi. I was in South Africa when the funeral took place for the late Princess of Wales and can remember the streets being absolutely devoid of people and traffic as people were all watching the ceremony taking place live in the UK. This showed me just how far her popularity had stretched, that even in the streets of Cape Town there was silence in absolute respect for a truly remarkable human. 1997 was of course the year that Tony Blair would win the general election becoming the Prime Minister returning the Labour Party to government for the first time in 18 years. And who remembers Katrina and the Waves? Well, they were victorious winning the Eurovision Song Contest for the UK with their song Love Shine A Light, Panic Not, It's Not About To Play. And IBM's Deep Blue Computer beat chess champion Garry Kasparov in the last game of the match, which was to mark the first time a computer had beaten world champion at chess. Love that game. It's a great game, chess. You'll say We've got nothing in common no common ground to start from And we're falling apart You'll say The world has come between us Our lives have come between us Still I know you just don't care And I said what about to Tiffany, she said, I think I remember the film. And as I recall, I think we both kind of liked it. And I said, Well, that's the one thing we got. 
between us Still I know you just don't care And I said, what about breakfast at Tiffany? She said, I think I remember the film I guess I recall my thing We both kind of liked it Talking of Deep Blue Something, that was Breakfast at Tiffany's by the band of the same name, which released in 1996. In the March of that year, Dutch aircraft manufacturer Fokker went out of business, which was a huge shame if you don't mind me saying, as I can remember many a happy flight on Fokker aircraft. The Friendship, the F-27, the Fokker 50, the Fokker 100, all really lovely aeroplanes. Just a day after the collapse of Fokker, Robert Mugabe, whom some might call a bit of a Fokker, apologies, had to be said, was re-elected president of Zimbabwe. Only 32% of eligible voters turned out at the polls. Mugabe, of course, would go on to wreak havoc on the poor people of Zimbabwe for many more years than should have been allowed, in my humble opinion. Fans of Mel Gibson were celebrating in 1996 as the movie Braveheart won the Best Picture Award at the 69th Academy Awards. The film, of course, tells the story of Sir William Wallace, a late 13th century warrior who led the Scots in the First War of Independence against King Edward I of England. Scotland, by the way, will feature in the next edition of my other podcast with the ingenious title Boarding Now, which releases on the 20th of November. Speaking of November, 1996 saw the hijacking of an Ethiopian Airlines Boeing 767 whilst en route from Addis Ababa to Nairobi. The hijackers demanded that the captain take them to Australia. Given that the aircraft was on a reasonably short inter-African route, the captain repeatedly told the hijackers that they simply didn't have enough fuel to head to Australia and that they would need to make a landing and refuel before heading east across the Indian Ocean. The captain started to descend towards Mombasa in the hope of being able to bring the hijacking to a peaceful conclusion. However, the hijackers prevented the landing and the Boeing started making its way out over the Indian Ocean. Of course, they ran out of fuel and as they did, the captain was trying his utmost to land the aircraft on the ocean and preserve lives. But the hijackers, at the crucial moment, struck him at the back of the head, which resulted in the aircraft hitting the water uncontrollably and 125 people lost their lives. Don't forget you can watch my sister programme, Boarding Now. The next episode will be available on the 20th of November via jeremyspeak.com. We'll see you there. The next track, Like Fairground by Simply Red, first released in 1995. Here's Supergrass with All Right.
final song today from the 90s was released in 1993. I can remember going to bed on the 31st of December 1992 and waking up in 1993 to discover that my employer had gone from being known as Czechoslovak Airlines to Czech Airlines with the stroke of a pen. Yes, Czechoslovakia ceased to exist from the 1st of January of 93 as the Czechs and Slovaks had voted to re-establish their independent identities. I was on shift at the airport on the 1st having to apologise to everyone for using the wrong title during boarding announcements. January of that year also saw the dissident poet Václav Havel elected as the first president of the Czech Republic following the collapse of communism. Elsewhere in 93, Kim Campbell became the 19th Prime Minister of Canada and was the first woman ever to hold the post. The International Criminal Tribunal was established at The Hague for the former Yugoslavia and was intended to prosecute crimes committed against humanity during the breakup of the former communist state. In September of the same year, the Olympic Committee selected Sydney to host the 2000 Summer Olympics and October saw two Black Hawk helicopters of the US Army being shot down during the Battle of Mogadishu, which, as we all know, was immortalised by Hollywood in the form of Black Hawk Down, starring Ewan McGregor and Tom Hardy, amongst others. I did say I thought the 90s was a challenging decade for many, so to play us out, something to cheer us up and bring about some nostalgia. Here's What Is Love by Hadaway. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me, don't hurt me no more. Baby, don't hurt me, don't hurt me no more. What is
You've been listening to On Air with Jezza. I've been Jeremy Spake. You've been amazing. Thanks for being with me and I look forward to being with you real soon. And in the meantime, remember to stay safe and look after yourselves. See you soon. The show is produced by Jeremy Spake Productions and is sponsored by Transform, the travel industry consultancy where creative thinking thrives.